The Technogenesis program is innovation and entrepreneurship rolled into one concept. The icing effects on super hydrophobic surfaces. Explorable visual environments. Gigapan robot. MEMS umbrella shaped actuator device. Healthcare media and marketing. Modeling and simulations and uh, biomechanics. Social media. Developing a wound healing test kit using cell sheets engineered by the thermoresponsive polymer technique. Nanoporous anti-reflective thin films to reduce the reflection on solar panels. It provides our students with the opportunity to work on real-world problems and find solutions that have also economic value. Technogenesis is a program that really makes Steeman stand out. It's giving me the opportunity to see how things go on a corporate level and have that professional interaction that you know, technogenesis is really all about. So it's students that they're innovative, students that they want to create their own business and contribute to the growth of their communities. They tend to uh, have a, a head start when they go out there in the real world because they get exposed to real world problems while they are doing their uh, undergraduate work. You realize all the practical applications of the things you learn in the classroom, you know, things that you think you might never need are actually really real-world concerns. The Technogenesis program is a great opportunity for students to actually delve into research and do something that they normally couldn't because they don't have these kind of resources. Having access to this equipment and doing this research is really great, especially for an undergraduate. Uh, kind of get your foot in the door of the world of research. You know, I'm studying what I, what I want to focus on in my biomedical engineering education. It's given me hands-on experience. It's intense focus on doing things that are actually going to be useful and used in the real world and the workplace. You can see the ultimate goal, the ultimate end point in what you're doing and how it can ultimately benefit society and people as a whole. They want to learn, they want to acquire what we call the soft skills or the business skills that they need to compete in this uh, day and age. Having these business skills, it will make them more competitive and will give them an advantage when they get out there and trying to survive in, in a professional work setting. So I'm really interested in the entire concept of renewable energy. Solar energy is one of the most important types of energy, although right now it is very inefficient and you can't capture nearly as much of the energy as is possible. So by focusing on reducing the reflection on a solar panel, you can increase the efficiency up to 5 to 10 percent, which is a huge amount when you think about all of the solar panels used throughout the world. I'm actually creating nanopores thin films, and to do this I'm using two different poly electrolytes. I'm making alternating bilayers using these two electrolytes, which bind to create the thin films that I'm trying to make. After this, I use three different acidic solutions. These solutions will actually make the films porous, which is what I'm hoping for. It is this porosity that is going to reduce the reflection. Basically what we do is we take the simulations of patient-specific hearts and arteries and we apply stents into them to see how uh, they are affected with stresses and stress dis distribution. We go into it, we extract all the main arteries and veins where potential stents need to be, where blockages may occur. We apply a stent to that blockage, to that vessel, and we test for optimization of the stent. So what we found basically are where the stresses go on the vessel walls and where, um, where the stresses are distributed and how much they are distributed throughout the stent. The real world application of this type of research is that we can use the simulations and models that we have to um, save patients a lot of time, money, and pain potentially that they could receive from a stent that doesn't work efficiently. We're taking gigapixel images, so they're really high definition images, and we're using an Xbox Connect to track a viewer so that they can zoom in and out and pan around the scene uh, using their hands. We have a Gigapan robot, uh, and essentially we can mount the camera on it and on a tripod, pick some points that we want to start and end, and the robot will take the pictures for us. So then we're taking them, rear projecting them, and then uh, coding an Xbox Connect using a gesture library to recognize specific gestures uh, for people to use to navigate. 
Right now, we're just using images, but in the future, we hope to use this for 3D imaging, uh, design architecture, situation simulations, stuff like that. We also hope to see um, an application for it in uses like going to like a civil engineering firm and they want to explore their models and their and what their structures are prob possibly going to be or even on like an educational front where we have pictures of like the pyramids and, of Giza and the teachers and students can explore uh, what actually like what the hieroglyphics on the wall say and things like that. This is going to be a blood clot removal device and the issue is, is that present day devices uh, don't allow us to fully remove the clot. So basically what we have is, is a, a device that's an umbrella shaped actuator instead of a coil. Instead of having to try and mechanically pull the clot, it softens the clot and provides a dynamic shear force to the clot. Right now what we're dealing with is just basically fabricating the device. We're working with material that is basically at a scale of you know, nanometers and micrometers. So we have a spin coder which allows us to produce a piezoelectric material at a thickness of 135 nanometers. The MA6 allows us to design a certain umbrella shape for the electrode piece, which is a certain component of the umbrella, uh, which is made to produce like an alternating electric field uh, to induce the piezoelectric material uh, to cause its deformation, which is basically what we want. If this project does prove to be successful, it, it's going to be a huge outbreak commercially, uh, for the medical field, because if this device works, there's going to be no other competition for it. The first thing that uh, I had to do was design an apparatus that can hold these uh, surfaces while they get iced up. And we're going to be using the icing wind tunnel in the basement of the EAS building. And once they're iced up, um, there's also a centrifuge that I had to build that goes inside the wind tunnel and we can put the samples on the centrifuge and spin them up and we can see at what RPM that the ice flies off and then from that we can calculate what the force was that caused the ice to fly off. It can be used on airplane wings to uh, prevent icing effects while they're in flight. They can be used on these large windmills you see. Uh, that generate electricity, and it can be used on simple things like satellite dishes on your house, so ice won't accumulate during the winter time and keep your uh, TV reception. I'm working for PG Chamber School located in Cedar Knowles, New Jersey, and we are working on their social media. Social media could really help nonprofits in a number of ways. Um, it could raise awareness increase the number of donors uh, actually in a recent poll. 52% of wealthy donors prefer to give online. An organization like PG Chambers is founded on its donors. I've never really been in a situation like this before where I'm actually helping nonprofit. This is my first time and it definitely is enlightening. We are using Facebook and Twitter and also a blogging site called WordPress. We have recently sent out an email to all the faculty and parents and donors and past donors and everything and the, the spike has been tremendous. Technogenesis really brought the real world to me this summer. Uh, getting us involved with PG Chambers is actually a great stepping stone to what I, uh, I want to be doing in the future. Dr. Lombardi and I, who's my advisor, basically got together and came up with this product which we were able to conform into this program called the TITRAD, which consists of ESL, which is English as a Second Language, Medical Development, and Employee Literacy Development. And with this, we're allowing hospitals to build a sort of connection between the patient and healthcare providers. My specific accountabilities include conducting a need-based analysis, also creating PowerPoints and presentations to present to the hospitals. New Jersey has 1.7 million immigrants, which is actually 20% of our population. When these people go to the hospitals, they're not medically diagnosed correctly because 
they can't speak English and they can't tell the doctor exactly what's wrong with them. I'm working on a project for the Liberty Science Center that's going to enable little kids and people of all ages to stand in front of a screen, move around, and feel like they're conducting and composing right before their eyes. I'm using a very sophisticated programming uh, software called Max MSP Jitter. The, the student or, or person stands in front of a green screen and they wave their arms around. The camera picks it up and they see their image on a projected screen in front of them and it changes the notes as they move their hands up and down. Now the key part about this programming is that it generates a random accompaniment and really working with the user to produce a song that has form, style, and interaction. It creates a video file for you and sends it home to your friends and family so you can have something to keep and remember from the museum. This can be implemented at science centers across the nation. That's giving commercial application to the science museums. There's benefits all around. What I'm doing pretty much is I'm taking cell tissues and I'm damaging them through various forms of damage, uh, mechanical damage, uh, acid-base damage, and I'm monitoring how the cells regenerate and heal the wound in various extracellular mediums. Before we can engineer the tissue, we have to culture the cells and make sure we have a lot of cells. Usually to make a tissue, it takes um, a pretty, pretty substantial amount of cells. You know, we'll vacuum out the current media, we'll wash it with uh, PBS, vacuum out the PBS, and then we'll replace it with new, fresh media, which contains all the healthy nutrients to help the cells continue to grow and, uh, and tell, you know, cells to multiply and split.